to have people look at you a certain type of way because of something that I can't help. And I don't want to help it because I love my melanin and I love being a black girl. I love being black, but it just sucks that sometimes people will treat you and will look at you a certain type of way and you haven't even given me an opportunity to get to know me. I've been walking for hours under this sun. But if our ancestors did it for us and did so much more, how can I not? Amara, I've been looking forward to this conversation for a few days now. And we're not gonna talk about your music so much. We're really gonna talk about how you're using your artistry and the platform that it's giving you to change the world, you know? To Amen. Places that you can affect. And honestly, I really commend you for all the work you've been doing and how you've been using your voice. You've been really courageous and bold in this space. This summer specifically, you were very hands-on when it comes to the Black Lives Matter movement. You were right. on the front lines of the protests. Why was it so important for you to be there? Not at home watching, not posting on social media, but on the front lines. First of all, thank you so much for, um, you know, uh, allowing me to use your platform to continue my work as an activist and to continue to bring awareness and everything else. I am a black woman in America. I am an Afro Latina in America. I am a Latina in America. In this case, you know, it just meant a lot to me. I don't like people that talk and do nothing. They just talk. So in my case, I wanted to talk and be about it. I'm really about the things that I say. I don't do this for clout. I don't do this for promo. I do this because I actually care. And one of the reasons why I care the most, not only because of my generation and, and the world that we live in now and for my own people, but my children. Right. I don't have any children. But the day that I do, my children will be black like me. And I don't want to live in a world where I have to be fearful of having kids because I'm afraid what's going to happen to them. So I just feel like it's my duty to be part. And you've also urged the Latinx community to show up as well. I want to get your perspective as an Afro-Latina. Why do you think it's so necessary in this moment for the Latinx community and the Black community to unite? Well, because to a certain extent, the Latinx is just as Black as the Black community, whether they want to admit it or not. I know that there's a lot of people, and I and I try not to get upset, even though that I'm only but human, but I try to understand that it's more the lack of knowledge, it's the lack of education that makes people act the way that they do. You know, the lack of education and knowledge of your own history doesn't allow them to understand that, yes, you may be Puerto Rican, you may be Dominicana, Colombian, de Honduras, Ecuador, Chile, Cuban, you may be all those things, but also know and understand that if you go back into your history, into your race, into your roots, we were there, we were there. Yeah. You know, you got some of us, you know? You got some of this African ancestor in your DNA as well. So, you know, I just think it's important because we are minorities, especially in this country. We are minorities in this country. In my case, I feel like I have the best of both worlds, you know? In a country where immigration and immigrants is such a big topic, as Latinos, and then on top of that, Blacks is a big topic, and then I'm right in the middle. It's like you get both of, of the headaches. You get both of those perspectives. So it is important for us to unite, and just, even if we take away the race aspect of it, just as humans, just knowing what's right and what's wrong, because we know, it, it doesn't matter where you're from, we know when they're treating you bad, we know when something is unfair, we know when something is not, when there's no justice, we know what it is. So it's like, yes, as the Black community and the Latino or Latinx community need to unite. But overall, it's just about doing the right thing. Besides the knowledge and the lack of knowledge, why do you think there is resistance when it comes to some in the Latinx community associating themselves with the Black community? What's, what's the issue there? Well, we can't expect things to change overnight. We have to understand that this is a generational, you know, brainwash. You know what I'm saying? This has happened from one generation to the other, to the other, to the other, to the other. Then it passes on to your mom, and then your mom and your dad teach you the same thing. So you kind of become on a defense mode all the time until you get a book and actually read, watch documentaries, do your own research you're never going to understand where this originated from. It's really new news to me that the Afro-Latino community is separated from the Latin community, the Latinx community, and also that the Latinx community, some, not all, don't right. necessarily 
feel like they need to unite with the Black community. It's new because I've always thought that we were in this together. Yeah, you're right. We can generalize and we're not generalizing. Right. There, There's good people and there's bad people. There's people that support, there's people that don't. So we're not generalizing, right. but it is true. Within the Latin community, we are somewhat, within the Latin community, those that are of darker complexions, those that have a higher, you know, a higher melanin, mm -hmm. we are looked at differently. We are treated somewhat differently. It's like, oh, there goes that black person. Or for example, things that I heard growing up that made me feel terrible when I was growing up sometimes. I used to hang out with some friends in like elementary, middle school and things that I, I remember very clearly. And I remember seeing their parents say, I don't want you hanging out with that black girl. I don't want you around them black kids. It made me feel, and I would ask my mom all the time, like, did I do something wrong? I am not doing this right now because sometimes I get, I be getting emotional. But then I would ask myself, did I do something wrong? Like, why am I seen? I am not doing this right now, but. This is why I commend you so much because you know this, you have people in your comments, I've seen them come to you and talk about how much you are helping them because you're not alone in that. It sucks and it feels terrible to have people look at you a certain type of way because of something that I can't help. And I don't want to help it because I love my melanin and I love being a black girl. I love being black, but it just sucks that sometimes people will treat you and will look at you a certain type of way and you haven't even given me an opportunity to get to know me. I'm like a really nice person. I'm a really good girl, but you don't want your kids hanging out with me because my skin is dark. You know, I can't help that and I don't mean to help it. And I know that there's so many little girls that look up to me and feel the same way that I felt, you know, or I I used to like date, um, like, you know, you know, I mean, I date anything. I, you know, I believe in love and you can love whoever it is that you want to. But I remember dating, you know, this light skinned Latino and his mom was like, when I went to his house, his mom was like, like, this is what you brought. Like, this is who you're dating. Like, oh, so now you're dating black. And it's just so terrible. Cause it's like, what world do we live in? Well, my you know, that's why I'm concerned. My question for you is, I'm sorry. No, no, and I'm sorry that it brought you to tears, but I, I, I honestly, this is necessary because at this yeah. point, as an adult, you're able to look back at those situations and say, okay, those people were just ignorant. Honestly, I probably shouldn't have been messing with them in the first place because right. we're just not vibing where I'm vibing. But as a kid, you don't have that understanding yet. So in those moments, how did you deal with it? Or what did your mom say to make you keep going and have the confidence you have today? Because Amara, no matter what people have told you in the past, you're shining now and you're able to mm -hmm. show up as you. So where did that come from? My mom was always very supportive of me. And I guess it also, my mom's a little bit lighter than me and my mom's sisters and family members are lighter. But on my father's side, they're very, very melanated. They're very dark skinned. And um, my mom always told me growing up, you know, because of the color of your skin, you're going to learn this later on in life, but you're always going to have to work twice as hard. And she always made sure to, you know, be there to tell me you're beautiful. Your hair is pretty. You have a nice, she was always there to make me feel like I was a queen. And, and sometimes I believe the parents don't know how powerful the words are. You know, as children, we look up to you guys. Everything that we know is because you guys teach us. So when you let us know that we're beautiful, that we're amazing, that we're smart, that we're powerful, that we can do anything. When we go out to the world, we feel confident because we feel like, I don't care what you tell me because my mom told me that right. I am blah, blah, blah. So she always made sure to, you know, that I knew that I was a strong, black, beautiful little girl. And I'm grateful for that because that helped me survive a lot of terrible situations. It's like the world is so full of culture, of diversity, of race, of food, sounds, rhythm, body shapes, just features. The world is filled of so much. And we're consistently just fed this little bit. So. I don't know. I just pray that we're able to continue to grow. I pray that this is only but the beginning of many great things to come. I am grateful that we are progressing, even if it's little and slowly, but the progress is coming. I am proud and honored to know that I've been able to inspire, motivate um, others to stand up as well. 
and I am excited to see what the future holds. Well, I'm excited about your new documentary, well, the documentary that you're in, the HBO Habla Now documentary, which seems very enlightening. Can you talk to us about the experience of shooting that and what topics you covered in your interview with director uh, Alberto Fierez? It was great. I think it was great. It was amazing because I was able to, one, I'm always grateful to every single platform that allows me to continue my activism and, and just bring awareness. I'm so grateful every single time. So just thank you alone. But being able to share this documentary with so many different people that have lived so many different experiences in the Latin community, it was a really nice experience. It was great to hear, you know, some of them were talking about the immigration. Some of them were talking about um, the, you know, the, the, the reasons and the necessity necessity of why we should vote. Um, in my case, I'm talking about colorism and the issues that happened in our community. And we had Native Americans. We just had a little bit of everything. Like, I feel like this is such an amazing and powerful documentary because it really shows you what we're about. You know, so I think it was great. Um, like I said, you guys cannot miss it. You have to go check it out. It's bomb, it's amazing. I was honored to be able to be with so many powerful, talented people. So I can't wait for you guys to check it out.